Welcome back. We are talking about the Rolling Stone article on rape that sent shockwaves across the University of Virginia, but is now in dispute. I want you to imagine that you are interviewing the victim of a crime and that the victim does not want you to contact the criminals. Imagine that the victim is afraid of retaliation. What would you do? In this case, the Rolling Stone reporter, Sabrina Rudin Ederly, and her editors all agreed not to contact those alleged attackers. This defies a pretty basic journalistic principle. When someone is accused of wrongdoing, you make an effort to get their side of the story. Now, Rolling Stone regrets not doing so. So many people are questioning that reporting instead of questioning a culture that's permitted Jackie's story to happen in the first place. Slate's Hannah Rosen questioned uh, the reporter about this before it became national news, and she joins me now from Washington. Uh, Hannah, Hi. where do you come down on this decision, this crucial decision that Rolling Stone made not to contact the accusers? It's a really unusual decision, and I think if you're going to do it, uh, uh, which you shouldn't, I don't think. Uh, but if you're going to do it, then you have to do two things. One, be totally transparent to your readers. Which Say, they were not. They were not. No, have a line in the story which says, I made the very unusual decision not to contact the assailants because it really made my source very anxious and this is a sensitive situation. But then the second thing you have to do is corroborate the story with other sources. So there are other people you could talk to, her friends she talked to that night, or you could find out if there was a party that night or check at the lifeguard pool. There's lots of other work you have to do if you're going to make that decision. Let me read part of what Rolling Stone said in its apology on Friday. Uh, here's what it said. In trying to be sensitive to the unfair shame and humiliation many women feel after a sexual assault, we made a judgment the kind of judgment reporters and editors make every day. It goes on to say uh, those uh, that uh, we should not have made this agreement with Jackie and that these mistakes are on Rolling Stone, not on Jackie. Hannah, that's a new statement that was revised on Saturday night. The original statement was perceived by some to be blaming the victim, blaming Jackie. Yeah, How do you I'm, react to that? I'm so glad they made this second statement because yeah. I was feeling bad about that first one. I mean, it essentially said this is Jackie's fault, but, you know, Jackie's not a journalist. She doesn't know the rules of journalism. She's just telling her own story. It's, it's on us, the journalists, to know that you have to trust but verify. You have to check the sources. You have to figure out whether the story is true or not because if not, you end up in a mess like the one that we're in now. Let me play a clip from MSNBC because in the past two weeks, this story has gotten national and even international headlines. Sabrina was on CNN once before there were questions raised about her reporting. And then even after there were questions raised about her reporting, she was on MSNBC's Melissa Harris Perry last Saturday. Here's a couple of sound bites from that segment. I think that when we talk about rape and sexual assault, we've um, started becoming very mired in euphemism. We call it mm -hmm. sexual misconduct. We yep. even we call it sexual assault. What does that really mean? Yep. So I thought it was important to show that this is not some form of misconduct, but this is a violent crime, and it was important to shine a spotlight on just how violent it is. Before I say anything else, I have to thank you, Sabrina, for writing this. I think you've done a tremendous act of public service, and I'm genuinely very, very grateful. Thank you. Uh, it is hard to read an article like this mm -hmm. and avoid the conclusion that we live in a culture that hates women, mm -hmm. just hates us. The media outlets that uncritically picked up on this story, I think, have to do some introspection. On the other hand, uh, Rolling Stone has an excellent reputation, mm -hmm. many important stories over the years. Uh, do you think this is simply an example of activism journalism gone wrong, and should we learn from that piece of this? Yes. I mean, I think part of what went wrong here is belief getting in the way of facts. So belief in two senses, belief in this story. You know, you, this story is an amazing story. It's a really important story to be told if it's true. So, you know, wanting the story desperately to be true got in the way. And then also activism in the traditional sense. I mean, that's what, 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 what happened to Sabrina, I think, is a little bit getting into the survivor culture, which is you can't question a victim, which I think is true. It's important not to question the victim if you're her support group, because you want to and create a safe actually... space. We've actually made progress in that respect, haven't we? I mean, as the decades have passed, the Cosby accusers, for example, were not taken as seriously as they should have been decades ago. Now they are being taken more seriously, and that is progress. Yeah, I mean, we have a ways to go, but the Cosby story, you know, this couldn't have come at a worse time because you see with the Cosby story what it was like in the 70s and 80s. These women were absolutely sure that nobody would believe them, and we are mm. making progress. So what you don't want, obviously, is for a story like this to set back the progress. Hannah, thank you for being here. Thank you.